Now, for those of you that have ever mixed a color before, you want to sneak up on your shade. You don't want to start out thick, dark, and go too heavy. My little cat's running around. Now back to where we were. I had to put him outside. So I'm only going to add a few drops of the pigment. See if I can get it where the camera can pick it up. I'm going to put just a little thinner in it. Doesn't take much. This is the recommended thinner for the gel coat that I'm using. Before you do this, check your manufacturer's recommendations to use the proper thinner. Now this pigment will be used to bring the color up to this off white that is on top of the vessel. Now you'll notice the portion the cups are setting on is very bright white. That's just white gel coat. No pigment was added. The pigment only needs to be added to the very top coat that you put on your repair. <clears throat> So I'm going to dilute the pigment into the white gel coat. Now this is going to give me a darker gel coat cover than I actually desire. But then that tinted gel coat will be used in the process of bringing a cup of filtered white gel coat up to shade. Now you'll notice I'm running this through a paint strainer and the reason for that is you may have impurities, clumps, or anything like that that's going to give you an undesirable finish. Now if you'll notice in the bottom of the cup how dark it is. It's way darker than the desired tint right now. It actually looks like a little bit of chicken crap with that white and brown stirred around together. But it's going to get a light tan color to it. And then I will add the darker medium into a cup. Separate cup of white gel coat. And this will give me my slight tint. I'm trying to make enough pigment in a cup by mixing the gel coat and the pigment together. And what this will give us is a color to add. Now I can add it by measuring or by sight and I can match the color of the existing gel coat surface on the deck. It's time for PPE. What I will do before I put any gel coat down is I will use the denatured alcohol and I will clean the entire surface because as you remember some of this gel coat had a little cracking and age. So pulling the tab off, getting everything out of the way. Having everything set up before you start a job like this actually be beneficial having everything right there at hand i've got all of this stuff on a thin piece of ply it's 
laying on the opposite side that I'm going to be working on. And then I will prep the surface area, wipe everything down. The denatured alcohol will evaporate quickly. Then I will be able to put the hardener in the gel coat. There is no hardener added to this. Once you have added your, in this case, I'm using a gel coat that requires MEKP. Methyl ethyl ketone peroxide is an organic peroxide with the formula 202. MIC is a colorless oily liquid. It is widely used in vulcanization of polymers. It is derived from the reaction of methyl ethyl ketone and hydrogen peroxide. Several products result from this reaction, including a cyclic dimer. Once you add MEKP, you only have a short amount of time before you have what's called cooking off of your product. That's why none will be added until I'm ready to apply. Now, this mixture can be laid on your gel coat to make sure you have a color match. I'm just a little bit out of camera range here and I'm putting a drop onto the surface. Then I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to smear it around. I notice that it's a little it's a little darker than I desire currently. So I'm going to add a little more white to lighten it up a little more. <clears throat> Now these coffee cups, I have measured them so that I can add the correct cc's. Now I do not use ounces in any of my measurements simply because if you use the metric system and you use cc's, you can take your milliliters and you can add cc's to it and you can get your 1% or 2%. I've never went 2% when mixing MEKP with any of my gel coat. My preference is even in the summertime or the wintertime, I like for my gel coat to cure slowly. It has a crystalline effect. And if you'll look at crystals that are formed by cooling quickly, they are short, fragile crystals. Ones that cool slowly are your longer and stronger crystals. This plastic that you're curing in the gel coat is going to be about the same. Now, I'm going to test now that I've added. And there's a little, there's a little difference in shade there. And a lot of it is due to age, but I'm going to lighten this up just a little more. Now, there's only denatured alcohol on that rag. So I'm able to wipe the spot that I put down clean. No problem. So I'm going to bring in the cup that's actually going to be the color that I'm going to use. Now, this cup will get the MEKP added to it. This is just filtered. It's about two-thirds full. There's the MEKP. I'm not going to put any in just yet. I want to get my color up, but I love this little measuring device because it's graduated and I can pump up. If I were going to mix this entire cup, I would just fill it up to that level right there. That is cc's that are equal to the milliliters at 1%. So I've got that full cup of white. And you see I'm only adding just a few milliliters of the tinted. And it's going to change the color of this entire cup. <clears throat> Excuse me. It only takes a little bit to muddy the water. So this is what I was talking about by sneaking up on it. Now, what I'm going to do is enough to do the side that I'm working on. I'm going to get it to tint and I'm going to keep testing. And I can tell right now, just looking at the cup, it needs a little more pigment. So there's that diluted pigment in the cup 
to the far right of the screen and I add it to this. It's not showing up well on camera as it is right here in person. This actually looks like a really, I don't know, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a really light colored frosty. It's, <laughs> it looks good enough to eat, but I don't recommend that. And please, any of you kids that's already eaten a Tide Pod, just ignore that I said it looks tasty. Who knows what you're willing to do. So right now, I'm looking at it, and that tent came out so close. It is very close. The naked eye, untrained eye, whatever, you're not going to be able to see it. So here's the cup. What I'm going to do is I'm only going to pull a little bit of my color out and add MEKP to it. And that will allow time to actually do the job. So I've got way more in my graduated cup than I need. So what should I do? Well, I'm simply going to pour it back into my squeeze bottle. And then I'm going to measure out a 1% portion to my cup that I already have here. Now, these are simply unwaxed coffee cups. And I go through so many cups that I'm not paying $2.75 per cup to buy these cups in your big box store. It's all about saving a little bit of money. That's, you know, I'm doing this as a hobby. I'm addicted to sailboats. I love fixing them. I love making them last longer. I hate top paint as you can never repair it properly uh, it gums when you grind it so i stick with what came from factory i stick with gel coat now this is a small hole i don't know if a tree limb fell on this or what it was but i had repaired a small hole here and brought the fiberglass up the level so what i'm going to do is pour it pretty thick with gel coat to fill that small dimple in the gel coat and then I will take the brush the china bristle brush and I will smooth that out and I'm actually going to level that area gel coat can be fairly thick it's just like epoxy it has some strength to it and you know how I do fiberglass repairs, so that's probably overkill on what was done for fiberglass repair. Because you know I love to get it a little better than it ever was. And then I'm just going to brush this on and get everything leveled off. The second step will be a nap roller. A little small 3 inch roller. And then I will roll the entire top deck. Now, where this corduroy type non-slip is from the factory that has been nearly impossible to reproduce, it's going to give a little texture to it that doesn't look like brush strokes. We do not want it to look like brush strokes, as you see here. Now, if you were to leave it brushed, that would give you some slip resistance but probably not enough so i'm very gently i'm not pressing down on the brush i'm just very gently smoothing some gel coat across this area and i'll fill the area in with just a little bit of gel coat now you can see that small depression there about the size of maybe a nickel maybe a quarter I, not sure but I'm going to edge around it, and the tape line will help retain this lip that is on this area. And if you were wondering why I've taped up the same color, what they have is the area that's taped off actually has about a 32nd, not quite a 16th, 
so a heavy 30 second of uh, lip on it and that little bit of lip gives the vessel you can see it right there where the cap is setting between the two cups in the center of the screen you can see that small lip the part in the middle is flat and shiny and the parts rest on the rest of the deck they have that corduroy material um, non-slip where it came out of the mold like that i was able to make a couple of molds and i actually have done some repairs to some of the very badly flaked off areas and replaced the gel coat with that corduroy type but it was it was just tedious and time consuming Now I've almost used all of the amount that I poured into this cup with the hardener and I want to do small areas like this when I'm filling in these rough areas where the fiberglass repair was actually done. So I've used fiberglass to fill in instead of fairing compound. As I've told you many times before, I do not approve fairing compound for the simple reason that it will move differently to environmental conditions than fiberglass and gel coat will move. And you'll notice a lot of times you'll have people that have large cracks reappear around their fairing compounds years after they've repaired it. And then you have a worse repair than if you would have done this by doing what I'm doing and putting on thick fiberglass and grinding it down and putting the gel coat in to bring the layer of gel coat back up to the factory thickness. So I stopped just above, slightly, we're talking 30 seconds of an inch, above on the fiberglass because what a lot of people don't realize is your top surface is actually the first thing that's put into the mold The gel coat is still tacky. It has not hardened yet. This is the time that you want to remove the tape. The reason for this is so that you get a nice clean edge. Pull away from the gel coat. Keep folding the tape over itself and you have less chance of getting this all over your fingers. Another way that I should do, usually do, is I wear gloves while I'm untaping. I took them off so that I could handle the camera and actually record this. Now around these cam cleats you'll notice that the turquoise runs in kind of a horseshoe pattern up around the non-skid part of the deck. And to acquire this, you have to separate the tape around this bin with a, an X-Acto or some kind of knife. I have a little carving tool 
that I use to go around those to keep that a nice clean sharp edge. And I've already got a little bit on my fingers. A little acetone will take that off. And some good non petroleum based hand lotion will fix the problem of the dry skin. It's getting out of focus. We'll fix the problem of the dry skin caused by the acetone cleaning your hands. Now on this top part of the clam it's faded quite severely and that's going to be another video. Thanks for viewing, like, subscribe, and follow.